Good morning and welcome to my channel. It is Holy Thursday today and we are in the midst here of getting ready for all the things of, that comes here for Easter weekend. What we have going here right now is Maria is getting eggs put into the Instant Pot. I've never used the Instant Pot for making hard boiled eggs but I hear everybody says it's so awesome. And so what I understand it's like five, 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 five. It's supposed to take only five minutes to come up to pressure. We have it set at high pressure for five minutes. It's supposed to naturally release for five minutes. Then we'll hit the little steam vent, let the rest of it out, and then we'll put it in a ice bath for five minutes. That's what I read everywhere online, so I'm gonna go with it and see how that works out. We're gonna do two loads. So for our Easter festivities, it's pretty much the same thing year after year. So maybe you've seen one of my other like Easter weekend prep videos and it's probably gonna look similar to this. Sometimes I change up the food a little bit. Yeah, it's pretty much the same. So right now, Peter and Maria actually went down to the basement. They are going to work on putting a layer on the pinata. So this is what we do for a pinata. We get like a great big balloon. I think these are the 12 inch balloons. Blow it up, tie a string on it, bring it down to the basement and then the kids just cut um, just newspaper strips newspaper. and then we just put them in a bag and then we take we take like one piece out and then but we have liquid starch here and you just dip it in there and just wring off it take it up and just put it right on here mm -hmm. and they're just gonna cover it and we and just do layer upon layer upon layer yeah this really feels like it needs a lot more layers, doesn't it? Some wire on it. Dad's going to put some like wire around it mm -hmm. to really uh -huh. the wire give cake. it some good strength. Yeah. Okay. So. So one thing that's really hard for me is to put up decorations when I feel like the house is not at the cleanliness level that I want. <laughs> But good thing I have kids because they don't give a rip how clean or dirty the house is or how cluttered counters or cupboards are. They are just so happy to put up the decorations. Yes, that is adorable, isn't it? It's a jar to use the body and yep. the socks. Socks. It's kind of creepy. <laughs> I think it's adorable. So off camera here, I quickly peeled up one of the eggs. This is one of our eggs from our chickens. So they're, you know, fresh just from probably yesterday or today. And it peeled. Look at that. No white fell off. I was very skeptical. I've heard people talk how wonderful using the Instant Pot is for hard boiled eggs. And yeah, I'm a believer. So next up, and I think we'll probably save these muffins for tomorrow's kind of like morning breakfast brunch. My mom had given me this. It was a cranberry orange muffin mix. All you have to do, put the dry ingredients there. And then this is the oil, the milk, and the egg. I'm going to get this whisked up. And I'm going to make mini muffins today. All right, Joe saw me doing this, and he wanted to get in on the mixing. So you just mix that till it's just moistened. Okay. The package said that this, uh, that the batter here needed to rest for seven minutes. So now I'm just using my co my cookie scoop. I think this is a one ounce cookie scoop. I'm honestly not sure. I wonder if it says on here someplace. This one is from Pampered Chef. Again, I got this like 25 yeah, years ago. Like. But anyway, so I'm just using my cookie scoop. It's one scoop per mini muffin. All right, these little cranberry orange muffins are all done. We all had one and they're good for a little pre-made mix. They were good. So I'm gonna just put these in here because they're all cooled. We'll bring these out tomorrow, I'm thinking. I mean, if anyone wants any more today, they can have them today too. But they can also have them tomorrow for breakfast because we'll be going to church for 12.30 and so it's also a fasting day. So what we'll do is we'll eat a really light sort of breakfasty lunch. It'll be like in the middle of the morning sometime and I just thought that these muffins would be a good thing for us to have tomorrow. Maybe with some fruit. So we decided, or at least I decided, to take a little bit of a break from the kitchen and I was doing laundry. I had to fold up a couple loads. Maria cleaned one of the bathrooms um, 
I checked on it and realized that there were some more things that she needed to do. Peter is gonna go clean the other bathroom. He said he would rather do that than wash dishes. So I'm washing dishes. I was like, have at it. You go and take care of the bathroom. I'll do dishes. Um, yeah, just kind of taking a little break from kitchen things. Although when I was doing laundry, that actually gave Peter a chance to get into the kitchen because he wanted to do a like chocolate cornflake nest type of a thing that he saw in a cookbook, which didn't quite work out the way the cookbook said it was going to. So he ended up having to add some marshmallow to it. And then that, um, I think that made it work. I don't know. I haven't seen it. He put it in the he put it someplace <laughs> in a refrigerator or somewhere, and I haven't seen him yet. But. So we were just trying to find or lay out some Easter outfits here. So this is Maria's for Easter Sunday. Oh, yeah, a little maxi dress. We're still trying to figure out. Are you thinking you're going to wear like your little jean, jean jacket, jacket with it? Okay. I love that thing. Okay. I love another bottle. Right, Easter egg people. Easter eggs getting filled, <laughs> which is happening. Peter. Oh no, one of the big ones open. Oh my you have to get some tape. Yeah. Do you guys know where the tape dispenser is? No. Look. Ooh, those look nice. Imagine finding that, huh? Mm-hmm. Ooh. I really so, want to find the green one. He was like, all right, well, it's looking good. I need to go iron. So we were just looking for clothes and I found a nice long sleeve shirt for Joe. So I'm gonna get that ironed for him. I need to grab my dress right now, and so far that's all that really needs to be ironed. I'm gonna iron one of Maria's skirts, but I just wanna show you this dress. I ordered this from, is this backwards? No, that's the right way. Okay, I ordered this from Amazon. It is a little like spaghetti strap, but look at how short the spaghetti straps are. It just goes barely across the shoulder and it has a lot of fabric. So you get a lot of good coverage up top, good coverage in the back. You can tighten this up if you want. It has a tie here as well, so you can cinch this in around the waist, and it's long, and it's lined. It comes in a bunch of different colors. Let me show you the lining. The lining is, you know, only goes like down to your knees. I am taking a break from the house stuff and I am coming outside in the sunshine and the cold and the wind and I am going to call me crazy but I am going to shovel a snow pile if I can I'm hoping oh no oh no so we have this snow pile here left in the yard where Warren plows and I thought what I would do is spread it out so it could melt faster so I could get rid of it because this is the last well there's some other snow piles over closer to the woods but this is the last one that I see from the kitchen window and I want it gone so I'm going to see what I can do Well, one thing when your husband works from home too, you really can't get away with anything. I thought, okay, he's in the house, he's in the office, he's doing bills, 
and I thought I can come out here. I can start hacking away at the snow pile. No one's gonna pay attention because the kids are inside watching a, watching a movie. And all of a sudden the door opens up and he's like, are you trying to get rid of winter? I was like, yes I am. He's like, I look out and you're just a hacking away at it. Well, let me show you what I did. So the pile is a little lower and I just tried to spread as much of the snow out as I could, but it is ice, just ice, ice, ice. So anyway, I'm gonna let this, the sun shine on this for a while and I don't know if I'll get back out here yet today, but maybe tomorrow, it's supposed to be a little warmer tomorrow, I think, not so windy. And so maybe tomorrow I'll come back out and see if I can get more of it down. Good morning. There are a few main things that have to happen today. First off, I have to get this venison roast into the crock pot tomorrow night for supper. Uh, when we have a group of people here, we're gonna have like shredded venison sandwiches and it's gonna be all seasoned up and everything. We'll serve it on buns. Good morning, uh, we'll have some other things too. Good morning, Joe. <laughs> and another thing that has to happen today is I need to make cranberry sauce. Oh, he just heard me sneeze. Thank you for the tissue. Um, I'm going to make cranberry sauce, a pretty big batch of that. Oh, do I have the sugar? Yes, I do, okay. <laughs> I'm getting pretty low. It's very close to time to do a once a month grocery haul and there are some random odd things that I'm just totally out of right now. Okay, um, also coloring eggs is going to happen today. Also, I had one other thing on my mind. However, first I need to get this venison roast in. So this is a four pound venison roast. I'm gonna set it on low in my crock pot. So to season this, I'm not following any particular recipe, but I have a lot of different recipes um, for venison roasts. And I'm kind of combining them today. So that's one can of cream of mushroom soup. And I'm actually going to spread that over the roast. I have one brown gravy packet. I won't be adding any water to this because the venison roast will create a lot of liquid and I want it to be sort of thick. We'll see how it turns out. I'm gonna add in some onion powder and I'm gonna add in some garlic salt. There wasn't much in there, maybe a teaspoon and a half, so I put all of that in. I'm just filling my pepper grinder. Can I put pepper on? Or did you already? I'm just gonna put it on right now. Okay. Yep. How much? Quite a bit. So here's what the roast looks like at this point. I'm going to put the cover on. We have it set to low. It's 9.30. I'm going to let this go all day on low. I want this to get ultra tender. Then I will shred it um, like at whatever point. So I'm thinking somewhere around 7 o'clock tonight. I'm probably going to shred this down, turn it off, and then the next tomorrow morning, then I'll probably turn this on at about noon so that we can be ready to eat around 5 o'clock tomorrow night. Well, dump so, it in. Yep, just dump it right into here. So we're going to be making some cranberry sauce here. I like to do mine strained, so I'll show you that process, obviously, when this is done. The ratio is two, two, four. So it's two cups water, two cups sugar, four cups cranberries. I'm doubling it right now. I have found that anything more than double um, doesn't gel as well. And I think it's just because it doesn't, uh, enough of the moisture doesn't evaporate, doesn't evaporate off in the boiling process. All right, we're gonna get this on the stove, bring this to a boil. It has to boil hard for five minutes before adding in the cranberries. Can I stir it? Yes, you can stir it. Is the sugar all supposed to dissolve? It will dissolve, yes it will. So while we wait for the water to come to a boil and then boil for five minutes for the cranberry sauce, we're gonna make some apple crisp. So this is my grandma's recipe for apple crisp. She made it like this for, well, my whole life. <laughs> and four cups of sliced apples, a teaspoon of cinnamon, a half teaspoon of salt, fourth cup of water, three-fourths cup sifted flour, a cup of sugar, and a third cup of butter. 
Now these ingredients all go into your glass baking dish and then those three ingredients get cut together and kind of made into a little crumb mixture to go on top. Now I never make this small of a recipe so mine, I'll kind of show you what I do. I have two bags each of six cups of apples sliced apples. I don't think my grandma ever made it from frozen, always from fresh. But here's what I do normally when I'm starting with, with frozen apples. Yep, yeah. put them all in there. I have this big, that's okay yeah. that that's okay that there's a little bit of ice in there because I don't add the water. Like so snap. this is a big Pyrex. This is, whoa, 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 is there a rip in it? Or did it just fall out? <laughs> I lifted it up and this part went bang. Right down. This is still big chunks. I think this is a this 10 by mm -hmm. something. So at this point, I'm going to just sprinkle over some salt. And I do not double or triple or anything the salt. I still just stay with the original half teaspoon of salt. I'm also going to put over some cinnamon. And for the cinnamon, I'm just going to sprinkle over, and I will sprinkle over two teaspoons. I'm going to double the cinnamon, but I'm not going to add the water because since these were frozen apples, they're going to have a lot of juiciness. They're going to have a lot of juiciness to them. All right, let's go over here and add the cranberries to the sugar water. I'm going to keep this at high until it bubbles a little bit, then I'll turn it down and simmer this for 15 minutes. Now I'm doing a double batch so rather than simmering it for 15 minutes I am going to set my timer for 22 minutes. So at this point I'm going to make the topping and I know I have 12 cups of apples over here but I just double the topping. However I know I just this just seems so um, so convoluted for you guys. Uh, I only one and a half times the sugar. So I have one and a half cups of flour in here, one and a half cups of sugar in here, and two thirds cup of butter in here. I'm gonna get my pastry blender out, um, you know, bring, make that into crumbs and put it on the top here. So basically what I'm saying is, this is a really good beginning recipe if you wanna go exactly the way it is, start with fresh apples, and then experiment from there if you need to make more. If I made this amount that my grandma made in her, you know, in this like, in her small 10 by six glass pan, I mean, literally it would be gone in a couple of minutes. So that's why I've always made this huge, um, this huge amount. And I just have found how, how it is that I like it when I double it. Sometimes you don't have to double all the ingredients when doubling a recipe. I know this is a total side note here, but if you've ever made something that has vinegar in it and then you doubled it like a, like a sauce, not necessarily a dressing, but more of like a sauce or a gravy and it calls for vinegar. And let's say that you double the recipe, you do not need to double the vinegar. And I don't know what is the reason for that. I was actually just talking to some ladies at church about that as well with like a soup or something. She had doubled or actually I think she tripled or something a recipe and she was like, it just doesn't taste as good as it was when it was a single recipe. And it's because different ingredients act differently, just differently. And I, I don't have a great way of explaining that to you other than it's just trial and error when you're doubling or tripling a recipe. And that's why in here, I do not double the salt because for some reason, a half teaspoon of salt is just right for four cups and it's also just right for 12 cups. Alright, so this is all crumb-like. We have to just get the, just wait honey. We need to get this off of here. We might have to use a little knife, so just don't slide your fingers on there, that's sharp. Alright, so we're just going to sprinkle this across the top. That is butter and flour mm -hmm. and sugar. And you know what, we're just going to dump it. 
and spread it. And then I'm just gonna kind of spread it around how, where I want it. You want to get it all covered. All right, so you really want to just move this all around, like all the way to the edge. And I have my oven preheated to 350 degrees. I'm gonna put this in for 40 minutes. Uh, that would be the amount of time for a single recipe, but I always like to check it at 40, see what it looks like, see if it's done, and I can always go longer. I'm gonna get my food strainer set up now. This is the one that I have. I will link to one uh, that you can look at at Amazon. There's actually a number of different brands. Um, I got this a long time ago at a local store. It was $58.99. Wait till you see how much these are now. Although it has been worth it. I use this a lot. Applesauce, tomato juice, cranberry sauce, salsa. You can do um, pumpkin, pumpkin puree tomato. in here. Yep, tomatoes. Along with the venison, shredded venison sandwiches tomorrow night for supper, we're going to have um, my friend Tina's coleslaw salad. So in my jar here, I have the oil, the apple cider vinegar, the sugar, but you know what? I didn't have any of the beef ramen noodles right now. So I'm gonna have to, I do need to get to the store for just a few things here. So I'll pick that up and then I will add in the seasoning packets. But for now, this is just gonna go in the fridge. But I just thought, you know what, get it ready. Then at least it's just that many less steps to do tomorrow. Mary asked recently how I wash Ziploc bags. So what I do, I have one of these little pumps. It pumps like the foam. So I put a few pumps of the foam in here. This is the Dawn dish soap, but it's that apple one. And then I put some water in it. And give it a shake. And then... I do this. Now this had cranberries in it, so it's really not that dirty. I also, if it if it is a little bit dirtier, one it, when I have like my hot soapy water in the sink, I just put the whole bag right in there, and I'll sometimes even put the washcloth inside, just move it around. So anyway, this is it. Dump it out, and then I'm just gonna keep rinsing till it rinses clear. <coughs> which two rinses did it. And then I have this little rack on my kitchen wall here. It's where I hang the towels after we've dried dishes with them. And I hang them here to dry so we can use them again. I just hang this like that. And then sometimes if it doesn't dry all the way overnight, I will just switch it around like that and let it dry some more. And when it's dry, I stick it back in my bag, and, or stick it back in the drawer, and I use it again. Now, I will say, when I am washing it, and I, if I notice when I'm washing it that there's like little pinholes, water is coming out, I pitch it in the trash. On Easter, we are going to be having carrots as our vegetable. I'm just getting these ready. I'm going to put them into a little bag and keep them in the fridge, and then I will bring them to a boil on Sunday. We're back from church now. The kids are 
coloring eggs and I just feel like everything fell apart here. Disaster over there. Disaster over here. Um, it's like, it's always like that on Good Friday. I'm always trying to get some things done in the morning, actually quite a few things. So what happened is that before church, we wanted to have a little, um, we wanted to have kind of like our brunch. And so then what happened is I just had to leave all of this and we had to just walk away from it. And then and on Good Friday, church is pretty long. <laughs> and so it has just, everything has like hardened. And now it's time to get everything soaking. So I'm going to get everything soaking here. I did get the cranberry sauce jarred up, but I have not canned it. So I'm going to can, water bath can, the, the cranberry sauce. But I think I'm going to wait until I get these dishes done. Although it would make sense to just get the water on and boiling. So all right, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to fill up my water bath canner, get that coming to uh, a good a good simmer, and then I'm going to start on dishes. And then after um, Good Friday service, I also picked up some chow mein noodles, I picked up the beef ramen for the salad as well as the sunflower seeds, and since I was there, all of a sudden I thought, you know, it would be awfully nice to have paper plates and then also some saltines. That was like our little Good Friday grocery haul. So here are all the jars of cranberry sauce. I can see it's already starting to gel, which is fantastic. I'm gonna get this into the water bath canner for 15 minutes. Okay, <laughs> so that was a whole lot of dishes. The kids actually, they actually dried the first round. And then when, like when this was full the first time, I said, hey, you guys come over and dry. So they dried and these will just let air dry. Okay, sinks are put together. I have all kinds of scraps to go out to the chickens and I'm getting my spot ready. My cranberry sauce is done, but I leave it in the canner here for 10 minutes. So Warren just came in and invited me out on a date, a date on the UTV. So I am going to, um, so yeah, I'm meeting up with him over here. He needs to go check water and then I think he wanted to look for turkeys or something too. Were you wanting to look for turkeys? Is that what you told me? So Warren just informed me that this is the last of the wood for this year, and then that's it. <laughs> no more heat. Then we'll just have to be cold. <laughs> then we'll just have to be cold. Because that over there is for next year. Yeah. But you thought that this would last us till the end of April? Yep. That's what you're thinking? That's what I think. Well, okay. if we get the warm weather next week that they're predicting. That's true. I have been... Well, I shouldn't say I have been, but Warren has been watching the weather like a like a hawk, like yeah. an eagle. What is the word? I don't know. But anyway, like then a concerned he... farmer. <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> and then he shares it with me, and this next week looks like it's going to be beautiful, like 70s, maybe even. You got to get outside pushing... to change that grumpy attitude you have. Oh, thanks, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> Well, then why are you grumpy? You're outside all the time. 
Mine is work related. Oh, okay. Mine is too. <laughs> too much work, not enough fun. Well, this week, let's have some fun. Shit sounds like a plan. Got two more eggs today. I think Peter brought in three this morning. Yes, he did. Three, so good. Five eggs, seven chickens. We're doing well. Joe, he's never cold. He's I don't understand. A castle. He's been wanting to go back to Florida. That's what I think, right? You want to go back to the beach? <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't know what to think. Well, it is an hour past the time that I wanted to shred the venison, but look at this. I am just picking this up. Well, no, it's not, but that's it. All I'm going to have to do is take this fork through it a few times. It's going to shred it right up. It's really soft. And there's nothing worse then cooking up a bunch of red meat that smells so good <laughs> on Good Friday. Oh, even Warren came in before. He's like, oh my gosh, that smells so good. Okay, well, I'm going to put the camera down. I'm going to get this shredded up and get this turned off so it has plenty of time to cool. I have to refrigerate this overnight. I picked up buns from IGA today. These are called barbecue buns. They're just the right size for... Um, for having sandwiches here. And tomorrow morning I'm going to get some chicken going. So yeah, everything is coming together pretty well for tomorrow's festivities. Good morning. It is Saturday. It's time to get the pinata going. Or at least time to get it wired up. Wired up. I was thinking about all of our piñatas and that, you know, they may not all win the award when it comes to the most beautiful, but the fun factor, they win the award. Yeah. Win the award. <laughs> now, here's a question. Should we fill this first before we paint it? Because um, as I get these wires on here, it's going to make the opening yeah. harder to get Yeah, it in. makes the opening really hard. So why hard. don't you guys fill it? Right now? Yes. Yes. So all those go in. Yep. And all those go in. If you ever make Trust a pinata, me. you need to be thoughtful on the things you put in it. One year? We really screwed up. One year we put uh, cheese and crackers and I think we even put pencils in. Pencils, which was a disaster. And you know what else I put in? They were those little carrots, like plastic carrots, remember? And you screwed them off and they had like the little... Um, uh, flavored sugar. Why did we put pencils in? That's like the most non-fun thing <laughs> a person could put in. We were pinata. trying to get away from just candy all the time. Oh, boy, and we really missed the. I mark guess on stuffed that animals. One. We could put stuffed animals in, but um, other than that, it's hard to find things yeah. that can go into a pinata. Mini, like those mini keychain stuffed animals. Yep, mini keychain stuffed animals yep, might work. So anyway, airheads are a real winner. Fruit snacks, I really anything that's like airheads. chewy. I wanted to Here, why don't you put in less? One thing about this piñata, I don't think it'll get for around. Like, well, to go all the way back around to the. It's oldest or it's youngest to oldest, so we start with Ainsley. Yeah. <laughs> Which I don't think it's gonna break it. I wanted to have two meats for supper tonight, and so yesterday I did the venison, the shredded venison, and now today I'm getting started with some savory chicken sandwiches. I am not using the bone-in chicken as well. Well, when I went to the grocery store yesterday to pick up some chicken breast, this was all they had was boneless, skinless. So I actually have six boneless, skinless chicken breasts in here. And I'm going to top it with a makeshift envelope of onion soup mix, which means I'm going to put in, if I had the powdered uh, beef bouillon, I would use that, but I'm just going to use these beef bouillon cubes. I'm going to use, how many are in there? It looks like I have about five. I think I'm going to use all of those along with some minced onion, dried minced onion, and that equals thereabouts. It equals a onion, a lifted onion soup mix. I'm also going to put in already made Italian dressing, about a quarter of a cup, and then one fourth teaspoon of garlic salt, which I only have garlic powder today. I used up my garlic salt yesterday, I think, and so I have some salt. So I'm actually going to put in a fourth teaspoon of salt and a fourth teaspoon of the garlic powder, 
and I'm going to add in an additional 1 fourth cup of water. I was just putting all the ingredients together for the coleslaw salad, so I have one bag of pre-shredded coleslaw here. I have the sunflower seeds, the chow mein noodles, the busted up ramen. Here are my ramen flavoring packets that I'm gonna to add to the dressing. And then over here, I'm toasting up some, these are sliced almonds. I would normally use like the slivered, but this is what I had and I thought, let's just use these rather than buy something else. I mean, that's one way you can save on groceries and and save on waste as well, is to utilize something similar. Even when a recipe calls, you know, it calls for garlic salt, you don't need to go out and buy garlic salt. You can just add garlic pow powder and salt and call it good and just move on. You don't even have to worry a moment about it. <laughs> Same with almonds. I mean, whoops, if all I had were some roasted almonds, you know what, I would grind those up in my food processor lightly, throw them in a pan, toast them a little bit, and then I would put those into the salad as well. So for toasting up the almonds, you just want to watch them very carefully. They can burn really fast. So I'm just going to keep spinning these around until they get toasty. What happens when you toast it, it really brings out the nutty flavor of the almond. It also gives them a little bit of more of a crunch, a little more of a crunch, and that's just really good in salads. At this point, I'm going to put this into the refrigerator. I have the dressing already mixed up, and about an hour or so before we eat, or really whenever I remember, I will mix over the dressing and give this a good toss. And it's time to cut the buns now. Okay. Yeah. Well, we're catching Peter doing some cleaning, but I think this is the first of the cleaning he's done. <laughs> uh, lots of cleaning going on this morning and you know like all I think I mentioned this to you guys before but like all the little tiny corners of clutter that just sort of you just walk by and you just don't even notice it and then all of a sudden you're gonna have like a gathering and you're like you know what there's a lot of stuff in the corners and we could actually have more room and more like moving around room if we get rid of all the clutter. So moved a bunch of stuff around where actually put it away where it was actually supposed to go. Now I need to kind of put this counter together. I'm going to put out some potato chips, some pickles. I'm going to see if I have some cheese and slice up some cheese just to have a couple little snacks here. Warren and um, like the other guys, they'll usually go out and hide all the Easter eggs. And um, and then everyone will kind of just like hang out and maybe have some have some snacks or something before we start in on the egg hunt. And then what else do we have to do? And then the pinata. Pinata, pinata. Maria and I have new headbands. We're trying them out. Trying to. I like mine. Uh huh. I like yours too. I like mine. It's just it's a little different look, but I thought give it a try. So, Why not? So if you like them or don't like them <laughs> or put it in the comments. Put it in the comments, I guess. <laughs> oh, nice job. Nice job, Sparky. Hey, I tried. Mm-hmm. You know you've uh, graduated into adult life when, when, you get to when hide you're the, the one hiding the eggs, right? That's right. All right, we gotta make sure we have some hid for the littlest kids.
the dump truck and the pipe rack. So oh, wow. I don't have any over there yet. I don't have any in this area. So okay, well, I'm, I'm out of eggs. Okay. I got about 20 some left. There. No, I'm going, going back in now. <laughs> don't give me your eggs to How hide. How many bags did you do? Enough. Because this is my second bag. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Asha. I'm so excited. <laughs> Make her do something, Amber, so she's Asha, nice sit, to the camera. Sit. Stay. Hi, Eska. <laughs> Stay. Are you going to go powder? She listens to you so nicely. Okay, easily. Eska, hey, come here. Sit. Sit. Stay. You can go, go powder. chicken's been going for a little bit over four hours here and now I'm just gonna kind of it's soft enough I can just shred it up like this little one's getting blindfolded Guys, let's back up. no she don't need it you're next okay Easy, come and hit it all right go up to the hey come here she's like I don't even know what I'm supposed to do here Hit it as hard as you can. Hit it! <laughs> Ooh, look at the smile on her face! <laughs> Woo! That was loud. <laughs> He's on the wrong end. When he plays for the Brewers, I expect tickets. Yeah, me too. I can see it. Woo! Well, good morning, everybody, and happy Easter. And you guys know the traditional response, Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Indeed, right? That's the traditional response. Did you guys know that? No. Yes, well, let me just show all the outfits that we put together, right? Peter's got on um, the bow tie. That's the same bow tie from up in the picture on the wall from Emily's wedding, remember? Mm -hmm. <laughs> And Maria, let's show us your dress, honey. You want to stand up? So, the, okay, this is one of the dresses that we picked up at one of the uh, area from a thrift store, and it's so cute. It's got like the little spaghetti straps. It's kind of like my sh my dress. And Joe, here's the nice shirt that we ironed up for Joe. Here, take your hat off. Nice, I love it. It's got a tie on today. It's looking all fresh and springy and Eastery, huh? And then I wanted to give you a little look at the dress that I'm wearing too here. So I ironed it up the other day, and this is that dress I said it has. I mean, I could tighten this even a little bit more if I didn't want like any kind of little spaghetti strap here. But anyway, here, let's see if I can. This is what the dress looks like. There's no pockets, but it does have a lining. Okay, so this is the this is the dress with with um, just a jean jacket because, like I said, it is spaghetti strap. So, but it totally covers. I mean, it covers my bra and everything, which is always a winner when you're finding summer dresses, right? All right, let's look at the food for the for today. Here's what I have going. We're gonna do ham. Originally, I thought we were gonna do more of a brunch, and I was gonna do kind of like an egg bake and ham and stuff like that. But then we just decided to do mashed potatoes, carrots, that kind of thing. So I have the ham going. The ham was too big for my big crock pot here, and I didn't feel like going down and getting the Nesco, so I just lopped off one section of the ham. I put it in this crock pot, and I have this one going, this one going. This is leftover apple crisp from yesterday. I don't think there's a whole lot 
There's the apple crisp. And then I also have dinner rolls. So for Easter, I always do, I call these lamb rolls. It's just the Rhodes frozen dough, and I kind of shape it. Does that look sort of like a lamb? A little tail, legs, body? <laughs> if I have to explain it, it doesn't look much like a lamb, huh? Well, anyway, then when, it, uh, when they rise, I'll put a little eye over here. And when I first saw this, like 20 years ago, I think they brushed some egg white on and then they sprinkled it with sesame seeds. Supposed to look, I guess, maybe woolly or something. I, I, we, don't, we don't want the sesame seeds, so this is what I do. So then later when we get back from church, I'll put in the, we'll boil up potatoes. I thought I would do make ahead mashed potatoes and get those done on Friday. Honestly, I just forgot. And then yesterday I was looking over my list. I was like, ooh, I was going to do make-ahead mashed potatoes. Anyway, it doesn't matter. There, it's not going to be a huge group of us here today. And so what I'll end up doing is just making some quick mashed potatoes on the stovetop. And what else are we going to do? Carrots. And they have cranberry sauce. And that's pretty much going to be it. And then a friend of mine, she brought over some beautiful looking cookies. And she brought those over to us, I think on Friday... Friday late afternoon and so I tuck those in the freezer and I'll bring those out for the dessert so I didn't even make another Easter dessert I figured bef between the gallon Ziploc bag of candy that everyone <laughs> gathered up from yesterday along with whatever leftover apple crisp there is of course you know they got candy in their Easter baskets on top of it all I figured no Easter dessert so. So cute. They are cute. A little bunny. Good morning, it's Easter Monday now, and I'm going to be wrapping up this video. I hope that I had some footage and everything from over the weekend. Once you have people come over, I mean, all bets are off with filming. It sometimes gets to be kind of tricky. But anyway, we're just playing one of Maria's games that she got in her Easter basket. Look at this, candy wrappers, candy wrappers, candy wrappers. <laughs> but it's called red light, green light, one, two, three. And it's so easy. What does it say the ages for this game? It is ages... Ages 5 plus. Okay, so yeah. Definitely, I would say even some little kids, I mean, if and they can count, even little kids younger than that. It's sort of like Uno a little bit. I mean, you're basically just trying to... Yeah. So what it is, is you go around and you have... And yeah, you just lay down... You get... You get red lights, green lights, Just show us and your then hand. It's okay. one, two, three. Yep. And then, so, at first I would lay down a red light, then a green light, and then I don't have a one. So, so then, then it would go to the next person. It would go to me. And then I would be able to lay down a one, which I have. And then I would be able to lay down a two, a two, which I have. And, and a three, three, which I have. And then I do not have a red light. So then but it would then, go to Peter. And then and I would, he would be able, be able to lay, lay down a red light, light and, and a green, green light. light. And then nothing else. And then nothing, and, and then it would go to me, and I would be able to lay down a one and a two. I wouldn't have a three. It would go to Peter. And anyway, I, that's yeah. how it is. If you cannot go, you draw, but you can't until it's your turn in the next round. So, a fun, simple little game. I mean, we got Joe over here playing it. He was a little grumpy about it, but he did play. And Maria wants to show us the little horses that she got in her Easter basket. Aren't those cute? 